a good day everyone thank you for tuning in my name is Ibrahim Diallo and this is part 6 of how to build a website from scratch in part 5 I started writing the framework we start, actually wrote some code and uh, I mostly got involved with the router uh, unfortunately we didn't finish yet so today we're gonna take this opportunity to finish the router and uh, do a little more things because as you can see each uh, section is kind of interconnected with other parts so by doing the router we have no choice but to contribute also to the controller and uh, from the controller we also need to do some basic rendering displaying the html on the page so all this is going to be going together and um, we're going to take like 20 minutes to read to write quickly um, the video is going to be accelerated, but you can still follow along and I'll also provide the code. So that's it. Sit down and enjoy. All right. So this is where we left off the last time. So today I'm going to start by quickly creating the settings, which was kind of throwing an error the last time because it wasn't defined yet. So the settings is a place where I put, uh, let's say, database credentials, um, some of the main application uh, folder structure for example since we are creating a uh, framework we're gonna be writing all our code inside the source folder and inside the source folder we can write different applications in our case it will be blog but uh, you know you can have multiple application inside this framework um, and they can all have their own routing or stuff like that so this is what I'm trying trying to write here I'm just giving default values for example we're gonna have blog which will have different uh, sections also, which will have the main section, the, the admin section, and the model. The model is where I usually put all the database functions. And also, you will see also pretty soon when we start writing about databases, uh, which hopefully will be in the, in the next video, and uh, we can uh, make organize our code in a way that it's easy to make calls to these functions. And I have display this place the settings class basically will only have settings. It will not have it will not be doing much really. It will just be uh, let's say uh, saving <laughs> like it's our configuration file basically. That's why I put it inside the config folder. So as you can see, every time I refresh the page, I just read the errors because they happen. They're like I said, they're not really errors. They're feedback. Um, that way I can see uh, what's missing because I had this vision in the beginning like this is how i want my application to look like and i wrote like the the application which was like only a few lines like 10 15 lines and after that i'm start to fill up the gaps to write what each function is supposed to do exactly um, um it would have been a good idea to start commenting and unfortunately i didn't do that because there's this great feature with the, at least with this ide you can uh, easily uh comment out things uh, comment things and uh, it will help the development basically when I hover over a function name for example it gives me the descriptions and all that and I, I hope I'll be able I'll start doing that on the next project and also fill up the gaps the parts where I missed so that way anything we use will have a documentation and when we're completely done with our framework we can use something like PHP doc to read all of them and just make it uh, create a documentation for us also, as you can see here, I copied the router rules from my blog because I didn't want to sit here and write that from scratch. It's kind of complicated. Um, and I also want it to be compatible with the way I do things in the in my blog. As you can see here, I mean, it, it's kind of a little struggle. I have to debug things that you can see I add var dumps everywhere. And uh, I delete some code that I think is not useful for this particular blog. And uh, I just go through that motion of uh, var dumping some variables and seeing why they're set to zero instead of not of working. And uh, anyway, you'll be able to read this and uh, see how it works. For example, here, I started using the router, but the router works with our current project. So basically, if you start a new project, let's call it blog, and inside blog, we're going to have main, and then we have uh, config, and this is where we're going to we're going to have a file called routes.php and this is going to be the routes for our particular framework this is how we're going to how do you say um decide here i'm creating the actual routes and i'll show you right now how it's supposed to look like 
just going to paste it here. So that's it. This is the structure. We have home page. We have article page, a list of articles. And uh, this file now is going to be included every time we run our framework. And uh, now our framework knows what the routes are. And uh, yeah, for example, and uh, each like basically each route will tell us which I mean, if we get to the home page, for example, it says which controller to call to call and how the URL is supposed to look like and what type of request is it? Is it a get request, a post request and so on? Um, this can be useful to get to know if it's a get request or post request. For example, we can have some URLs that only accept uh, post, for example, we don't need all of them to be get. So, yeah, that could be useful in the future. Here I'm debugging because uh, obviously there was a mistake and I just didn't know. Like uh, it was a mistake between the two frameworks. Like because I copied it from my previous framework, I named two variables differently, and uh, it takes it took a little while. But you know you ended up figuring out what what's the exact problems. And that's something you shouldn't be that shouldn't stop you. Because just because you have bugs doesn't mean it's over. You have to stop. Everybody has to go through some debugging process even I like I'm recording here and you can still see me struggling with some stuff um, I just sometimes I just don't know what is happening why my variables are not the values I want them to be and uh, I have to go through this motion and uh, you know look at what was the value before I started using it and uh, so on I just go through all that for example here I'm trying to trace back oh by the way that's one um, another good thing we're going to be doing also like in our error we're later going to be updating it to to have a trace basically so when something goes wrong we want to see what happened so instead of just like first of all we're going to have the detailed errors of what happened and also we're going to have like something to give us like the line numbers which functions were called and all that and that's provided for free on uh, with PHP, we just call the exception class and just throw uh, show the uh, the trace. That's gonna come on probably in the next section also where I'm gonna update it. Anyway, finally I've, I managed to debug it to see where the problem was exactly, and uh, yeah, sometimes it's that easy. I just put a not empty instead of empty. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times my bugs are like single character or like. It's a single character, but it changes the logic. Okay, just having the not symbol, the uh, exclamation point, makes a huge difference because it wasn't, you know, it's easy to overlook, but yeah, that was what I wanted to use. I mean, I, I was not supposed to use that. But yeah, anyway, it worked out. And now it tells us one particular function is not, that's because I copied from the other framework. Okay. As you can see, probably half of that video is debugging, trying to figure out things, why this thing doesn't work. And, uh, you know, you end up, of course, figuring it out. Here I was just testing because I want our router not only to give us the URL, but to give us the parameters. So when we, when the router process the URL, it'll give it back to the controller and tell us what is the route, what is the URL, what is the, the all the values we passed on the URL, and so on. Once you'll be able to download this file, you'll get a clear, like a better idea what is actually happening. And that's also a thing you like, uh, I'm going to be posting all of these on my blog with the files that you can download. I'm going to try to do like each version of the, like for part six version, for example, part five and so on until the beginning, trying to have like a, a history. And there's one thing I haven't been using here yet because I didn't want to overwhelm you and introduce you to all these tools, but it's called SVN. It's a source control. Normally, I never start a project without using source control, but since I wanted us to start slowly, basically, uh, I tried not to use it right away because source control is an amazing thing. Basically, every time you make some changes, some important changes, you save your file and you commit um, this change is going to be there forever. Let's say I made some changes, okay, and uh, I deployed my website on my on my server and then I see everything is wrong that or there's a problem and I cannot fix it. Because I'm using a source control, I can revert back to the previous version and uh, you know, try to figure out what went wrong. 
but in the meanwhile my website should able be able to run and it's also a good way just to see the evolution of your code like what went in what went out because you can see the difference between your latest save ver versus your new one see what you change and all that svn or whatever some other people use github or there are many other tools over there mercurial but yeah as long as you use one that can allow you to control your like your versions basically here as you can see i'm try i'm gonna leave a placeholder for my render because uh, it's gonna have a, a little bit of code over there and uh, it's uh, it's the part that's gonna it's an important part because uh, that's where the HTML is built and it's sent back to the browser. And of course we didn't get yet, we're not yet at the place where we select templates and all that, but that's gonna come to in the future, in the near future. Here I'm just making the, the, the blueprint, so to speak. And we're gonna start using it probably in the next section. Actually here I'm gonna give a little demo, like try to include some HTML and print it to the page at the end of the video, but yeah. Sometimes it's a little confusing because you're not, you don't know exactly what I'm trying to do. But for example, here, build controller. It, it I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to build the class name because, you know, we use namespace and sometimes the, the classes are not di directly defined. So we use namespace. I try to parse that and uh, instantiate a new class based on that. So, because we don't know exactly, it's based on the, on the router. If the router tells us to use a particular controller we have to parse that string and then build a controller from that and that's what i just did here of course with some errors and i have to um, debug it too there's always something to debug always a small mistake good okay so now it says i called a function that's not defined and that we're going to start doing defining that particular function which is a request yeah, oh, yeah, the response. We didn't create the response class yet. So let's start with that. A response basically uh, is not necessary, but it's nice to have a place where I can have, because uh, all, all I could do is just um, echo the content. Because as soon as you use echo in PHP, or which is print line in other languages sometimes, it just sends it to the server, okay? It just sends the content. But I wrap it around a class so that way I can have the, the headers in one in one spot and the, the content in another spot. Yeah, I'm just going to initialize it here. Just put a few default values and uh, that's it really. Maybe I should accelerate this video a little more, but... But at least uh, if you if I keep it at this speed, you can uh, watch at some point and pause it and hopefully it'll be good quality enough so you can see exactly what's on the page. And also I recommend you, well, I should have said that in the beginning, but I recommend you watch this on full screen. This way at least you can see everything, every single thing that's happening. Because here um, in a smaller screen, you might see some text that's blurred or something like that. So might, might as well put it full screen and be able to read and pause it and so on yeah here i just want it's a, just a way to print the headers because throughout the years i found that like my first way of doing it was buggy so i had to change it anyway so as you can see when i refresh refresh the page no, there's nothing on the page now as, and you see i also added that so what what this means is our application is kind of ready because we managed to print something on a page. With a, and I'm not talking about debugging stuff, but we managed to send some content. And uh, I think this could be a good time to start building uh, the, like the application controller in the source. Oh, by the way, this is the type of comments I was telling you about, the PHP doc, which is used, by the way, in any other, many other languages. It's, re it's just good because you can, at the end of the day, you can just press a button and then compile a whole documentation. Yeah, because I, I wrote that 
just for this one because you know the render is going to be a little complicated and i just wanted to give you a heads up what is going to happen and again these are not errors that's feedback And of course, always there's a problem and I have to go back and trace, see what went wrong, check my different files. I should have started directly with uh, writing that error, error class, because it would have given me much more details right from the beginning. Unfortunately, I decided to go this route. And now I have to do it the hard way. But we're almost there. We're almost there. Just a little, a few problems here and there. You see, I've solved that problem already. Um, or did, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, from copying and pasting. That's so, what something to think about. Uh, a lot of times, I mean, at least here, it's my code. But a lot of times, people copy stuff from Stack Overflow and just paste it on their website. And, uh, you know, it's not going to match exactly the way you want I'm not, nothing against copy and pasting, but it's a good idea to actually analyze, try to understand what is happening. Because someone can easily just give you some bogus code or something or hack your website like that. And at least Stack Overflow is a trustworthy website. But if you take code from other websites, they can easily just give you something stupid and you're going to run it and probably, I don't know, delete important files from your computer or just give them access to your site. So yeah, always be careful with that. When you copy and paste code, always try to um, read it at least, try to figure out what it is doing. Which I didn't do in my case, but anyway, it, it's my own code, so I trust myself. I think I can do, I can trust myself. Maybe. Yeah, it's uh, kind of taking me a little bit time to finish writing that rendering part because errors happen along the way and you have to make sure you ha you get no errors and that's like i said before it's better for you to throw the errors than the errors to happen by themselves like my motto is always enable errors like make them big and ugly you know that way you you, you don't want to have a website that runs with errors okay there's just so many advantages first of all uh if you check my blog i just google advantages of hiding error of of showing errors something like that you might find it um not only it's it will help you see where the errors are but there's also some performance benefits in there because when you have an error and you just mask it you're you're basically generating that error and you're just at the moment where it's supposed to print on a page php checks the setting should i show the errors yes or no and then if it's no it doesn't but it did all the processing of the error already so might as well just show them and see where they are then fix them right away also it helps your error log to be clean that's an important part because for example one website i used to work on because there was like thousands and thousands of errors every minute you there was no way you could find the exact error you're looking for and uh, some of them are just warnings it's it makes it makes the website so hard to debug when something's wrong on on the production server so the moment I tried to fix some errors and then made it clean, I realized that somehow some a person was hacking our website and all that. It, it, it There's just so many benefits. So definitely do what I did in the beginning and make sure you enable all errors, at least when you're developing here on, uh, on your local machine. Maybe you can have different settings for our production machine, which I will do, by the way. I will do it. Anyway, I think the render is done well once i'm gonna uh, remove those debugging code again another exclamation point that that kind of gave me a hard time here i'm giving uh, i'm just gonna create a default controller um a default controller called home controller and uh, i'm gonna try to um what do you call it print print some content on the page first i gotta finish with debugging yeah it's supposed to be values instead of params. Okay. Oh, right. It's, the render is not done yet. 
I want to make sure that all my controllers return responses, response uh, objects. If that's not the case, then well, we have an error. I want to. It's it's a way to keep things consistent. Like I make some rules, and it allows the person to basically not go, not create extra bugs. Basically, these are the rules, and this is how we we do things here. And uh, I mean, it's flexible because since you're seeing exactly how the framework is built, you can go ahead and modify that. But at least when you have some restrictions like that. It allows you to organize your code so you don't just throw, you know, a response somewhere inside your template or inside, like, anywhere you want. Or if you don't want a response, you don't just cancel it. But it allows you, like, for example, if you want to uh, print a JSON content, JSON content, you can do that too, you know. You can just set the headers and return a response with that, and that's it. Anyway, the controller... The, the, the render is kind of done and here I'm just writing a simple test of HTML and uh, I'm gonna pass that to my response and return it and uh, we will see what will happen this is some some sample text that I'm trying to write on the fly making sure also the HTML is correct window is not nicely indented also add a title that'll be nice and there you go we added content we added something on the controller and we got a response well that's it for today we created a response and uh, uh, a route a route we created the router finished writing the router uh, build some of the controller part created a response and uh, the basic of our framework is there if we just leave it to this point, we can use our framework the same way we had our previous PHP codes that we wrote, but it will be more organized. At least we know where each each file is, basically. But of course, on the next video, we're going to add a little more, uh, make this a little more flexible. We're going to start adding templates, for example. This will allow us, for example, inside our controller, we can decide for example, if, if the person is on the homepage, we can decide which template to use here and uh, how to use it if we have some other sub-templates to make things consistent. For example, we'll have one to, that will define the overall look of the website and that will just be like index. And then we'll have a header or footer and so on. And probably we'll have like an article or homepage. And yeah, it's going to look good basically. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Um, subscribe so you can see uh, new videos from me and uh, learn more about building a website from scratch. And you might not see the end right now, but we're going to be able to build something like, let's say something like WordPress. It's going to be huge enough to, to compete. <laughs> well, yeah. We're going to have an admin. We're going to have a whole website. It, it's just going to be fantastic once it's done once it's done but for now we will keep on coding thank you for watching don't forget to give a thumbs up if you like it and you will see me next time All right. All right.